Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Craig from AWS. Today we're talking with Kelvin from Segment. Hi Kelvin, tell us a little bit about what Segment does. Sure. Segment is the single API for all of our customers to manage their customers' data. Interesting. Now I understand you're really big container users and you use uh, ECS. Can you describe your environment to me? We are. We've actually been using ECS for about two years now. And currently today, all of our production workloads run within containers that are managed by ECS. What that translates to is about 350 different ECS services yep. running 16,000 different containers. 16,000, <laughs> that is significant. So today specifically we're going to look at how you manage and how you monitor an environment at that scale. And I understand you've built some of your own monitoring tools. Are you able to describe the monitoring tools you've built? Sure. So I think it all starts in terms of our logging pipeline, uh, which tries to address kind of three main use cases. Yep. One of them is the audit use case, where you want to understand what happened six mm, months ago. Like forensics and that type of thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The second is the search use case, where you want to understand, hey, I've got some sort of query. How can I find it, this needle amongst this haystack? Yeah. And then the third is actually the tailing use case, which I'll touch on a little bit today, where we want to understand what's going on in production right now. So like application monitoring exactly. and, and understanding how your systems are performing. Yes. So we only have three containers shown here, not 16,000. <laughs> uh, are you able to explain how the logs are generated and then passed through the system? Sure. So the logs start within a container and they're actually all logged via standard out. And when we create these logs, they get sent first directly to the Docker daemon. And this is configured via ECS. You can choose which logging driver you're using on a per container basis and a per service basis. And whatever that container outputs will actually inform where those logs go and how they're formatted. Okay. So the logs come to the Docker daemon, and then how are they processed uh, after that? Right. So when they come to the Docker daemon, they kind of come in a machine readable format, yep. which contains all of the metadata that you might need. And from the Docker daemon, originally we sent those logs directly to journal D, uh, which is effectively this logging daemon that lives on modern Linux hosts. And that's a very common pattern, isn't it? That's typically how you do it with Docker. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But Super that didn't, common. But that didn't work for you guys. It didn't. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is that when journal D rate limits incoming log entries, it will actually rate limit those on a per process basis. So if you have two processes which are both writing to journal D, it'll keep track of which one is writing more. Unfortunately, with Docker, if you're writing directly to journal D, that all looks like it's coming from the same process. So if you, if you have lots and lots of containers on one host, one instance, that it looks like they're all coming from, from the one process, yeah? Exactly. And so if you have one badly behaving container, what happens is when Docker logs that to journal D, it'll end up starving the rest of them so they're unable to write. So if you have one bad <coughs> container, it can take out the whole instance. Exactly. Yeah, which is not ideal. And it does it silently too, so you get no warning. <laughs> so how did you solve that problem? So we solved it by creating what we call the rate limiting log proxy. And you built this yourselves? We built this ourselves. Okay, very cool. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about what this uh, proxy does. Yeah, so this proxy actually exposes a syslog server, which Docker talks directly to. And when Docker talks directly to the server, it actually tags the incoming log lines with each container ID. So container A will get a different ID than container B, will get a different one than container C. And for each of these log lines, or each of these tags rather, the rate limiting log proxy keeps track of which containers are logging and how much they're logging. So that if one container is badly behaved and it starts sending a bunch of lines, yeah this will actually start limiting it and say, hey, I'm beginning to drop log lines because you're logging too much. So as a, a developer or as a platform uh, operator, you get to see, oh, this container's behaving badly, but it doesn't take out all the other containers on the instance. Exactly, so it gives you both visibility and isolation. And it's a really cool use case for tagging as well. Exactly. So the, lo the logs come through the proxy, uh, assuming that they're all behaving well, they, they go then to journal D? That's correct, yeah, so they go first to journal D, and here they're also tagged with the container ID and the service. Okay. But of course, once they're there, they're not that good if they're just sitting on each instance, right? Yeah. Uh, so we actually have to do a step to get them off each instance. Okay, so describe that step. 
So that happens with another open source tool that we wrote called our ECS logs binary. And this is just an open source Go binary which tails journal D and looks for entries which are tagged with a container ID yep. and a service tag. Okay, so all these processes run on an instance in the ECS cluster, yeah? Exactly, yeah. So these are all running local to the instance, which means that for a given instance, it's all self-contained. We don't have to worry about isolation between instances, really. And you've done, you've decoupled the collection locally of all the containers with, with the fan out to the, the, the logging collectors over here or the logging platforms, yeah? That's exactly right, yeah, because maybe next week or in six months, we might want to use a new logging tool. Yep. We don't have to change any of our code or our collection pipeline in order to do that. We simply change the uh, fan out config. And the ECS logs process takes uh, care of passing the logs onto uh, other platforms. It does, yeah. yeah. So in our case, we send these out to a handful of providers. And kind of the one that we're using most often is CloudWatch. And for each of these, we actually create a group uh, which contains the service and the container ID as the log stream. And that way, we're able to actually dig into a single stream to understand what a given container's execution did or query at the service level. So it's a really good uh, use case of uh, making full use of CloudWatch as well. Exactly. And you've open sourced all these uh, components that you've built. How can customers find these um, open source tools to experiment themselves? Sure. So all of these are put up on GitHub under our Segment.io organization. There you can find the rate limiting log proxy, ECS logs, as well as our CW log CLI tool for actually interacting with CloudWatch. Oh, okay, so you've written a, a, a CWI logs tool for exploring CloudWatch as well. Yeah, our, our take there is that logs aren't actually useful until they're usable. Yeah. So we've built some tooling to make the CloudWatch API a little bit easier to use locally. So if customers go to here and they search for rate limiting log proxy or ECS logs or CW CLI, they should be able to find the tool. They'll find it all. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you for joining us on This Is My Architecture.